This is the beginning of Unit 2 on Analytic Geometry in the 2D course. Uh, we are going to develop and manipulate linear models. We are going to solve problems using analytic geometry involving properties of lines and line segments. And we are going to verify geometric properties of triangles and quadrilaterals using analytic geometry. But before we get into all of that in this unit, we are going to do a little bit of review. So today's topic is polynomials and equations. And today's goal, to review operations with polynomials and solving linear equations with and without rational coefficients. In other words, fractions. So we're going to start with a review of polynomials and looking at adding two polynomials together. So adding two polynomials, we need to remember that we remove the brackets and collect like terms. Remember, when you collect like terms, you simply add or subtract coefficients, and the variables and their exponents don't change. So for example, 1, when I say to simplify this following expression, uh, 3x plus 4y plus 5x minus 2y, uh, all I really need to do is remove the brackets, because the brackets aren't doing anything. They're just separating the two things, saying that this is one polynomial, and this is the other polynomial, and we want you to put the two together. Uh, but mathematically, they're really not doing much. So we'll say 3x plus 4y plus 5x minus 2y. So now we need to collect like terms. And I know that 3x and 5x are the same things because they both have x's. And when I put 3x and 5x together, I get 8x. Now the other two things we have, we have a positive 4y and a negative 2y. When I put a positive 4 with a negative 2, those two negatives cancel two of the positives, and I'm left with positive 2y. So we simply collect like terms. Moving on to subtracting two polynomials. Remember that when you subtract two polynomials, again, we can just remove the brackets, but this negative sign in the middle has an effect on both of these things. It's kind of like multiplying a negative 1 through the brackets, which means that it's going to change the signs when I take those brackets off. So that's what it says up there. Remove the brackets. Be sure to change all signs in any bracket following a minus sign, and then collect the like terms. So in other words, this becomes 3x plus 4y subtract 5x plus 2y can't forget my equal sign out front for proper math form. And now we'll just collect like terms, and I can see that I have a 3x and a minus 5x. When I put a 3x with a minus 5x, I'm left with a minus 2x, since those 3x's cancel 3 of the negative x's. And then I have a positive 4y and a positive 2y together, giving me 6 positive y's. Whoops. Uh, color plus 6y. Now we'll take a quick look at multiplying monomials. Uh, multiplying monomials, we have to multiply the coefficients and add the exponents on the like variables. Uh, however, I'm going to do it a little bit different to start so that we can recall what we're doing here. Um, this monomial here can be written as 3 times x times x times y times y times y. And this monomial here can be written as negative 5 and then x times x times x times x times x. And we know that Bedmus tells us that I can do, um, do multiplying and dividing in any order I want. So here's the order I want to do it in. I want to multiply 3 and negative 5 because that's easy. And then I'm going to stick all my x's together. So I've got two x's from here. And I have another five x's, one, two, three, four, five, from here. And then I've got those three y's. So I decided to multiply all the things that were the same, the constants, the x's, and the y's. And now I'm going to turn it back into a monomial. So three times negative five is negative 15. And now I have seven x's right there. So I'm going to write that as its power, x to the exponent 7. And then the y changes back into y cubed. Now, that's a lot of work. I don't want to do this every time. So we just want to make sure that you know that um, all we really have to do is take the 3 and multiply it by the negative 5. And that gives us the coefficient, the negative 15. 
and then we take the x squared and the 5x squared, and now I know I actually have 7x's, or sorry, 5x to the 5th. If I take x squared and x to the 5th, I now know I have actually have 7x's all multiplied together, which gives me x to the exponent 7. And then that y cubed up in the original question right here, it doesn't have anything to go with it, so it's just y cubed. So all we really have to do is multiply the coefficients and then add the variable's exponents. So 2 plus 5 gives us that 7 down there. Moving right along, the distributive law. The distributive law gives us a way of uh, going around um, bedmas when we can't do anything in the brackets. So what it tells us is we multiply each term inside the bracket by the term on the outside of the bracket and be sure to follow the rules for multiplying monomials. So for the example number four, we're going to expand this bracket. We multiply the 5x through the brackets and then follow the rules of multiplying monomials that we did a minute ago. So I'm going to take 5 and multiply it by 3 to get 15. And then I know I've got 1x multiplied by two more x's. Gives us three x's all multiplied together, which is x cubed. Now I'm going to take the 5x and multiply it by the 2xy. Well, 5 multiplied by the 2 gives me 10. And then this x and this x multiplied together give me x squared. And there's nothing to go with the y, so it just hangs around on the end. And that's the distributive law. Now this one here, where it says expand and simplify the following, there's a little bit more to it because there's two places where I'm going to do the distributive law. The first thing I'm going to do is multiply the 5 through the brackets. And so that's going to give me 10x minus 5. And then I'm going to multiply this negative 4. Now be careful with that negative. I'm going to multiply the negative 4 through the brackets, and I get negative 4x squared. Now negative 4 times positive 6x gives me negative 24x. And negative 4 times positive 3 gives me negative 12. Now, once we're done doing that, we have to take a look at it. Since there were two expressions to start with, there might be some like terms to collect here. And we can see that, yes, we actually do have a 10x here and a negative 24x here. We also have a negative 5 and a negative 12. And we know that if I want to put it in the correct form mathematically, I need to put that negative 4x squared first because I need the exponent on x that's the biggest. I need that term to come first. Now I'm going to do my x term. So when I take a positive 10 here, and I put it with a negative 24 here, that gives me negative 14x, because there's some canceling going on. And now my constant terms that I've underlined in green, negative 5 and negative 12 put together is negative 17. So I have expanded on this line here, this line was the expand. And this line here is where I simplified. Moving right along, we're now going to do a review of solving equations. And I want you to remember the golden rule of algebra. Whatever you do to one side of the equation, you must also do to the other. So when you solve equations, your overall goal is to isolate the variable on one side. And in that process, you're also isolating the constants on the other side. So here we go. For example, number 6, we have 15x plus 12 equals 8x minus 2. And I've got the process all down here. It says, first subtract 12 from both sides to isolate the variable term on the left. Now, we don't have to do it that way. I can isolate the variable term on the right. But most of the time, I choose to isolate the variable term on the left. So I'm going to work on the left side and subtract 12 on both sides. And now the next step here tells us to simplify. So I'm actually going to put those together, and I know that this positive 12 and negative 12 is gone completely, and so all I have over here is 15x. And on the other side, I have that 8x, and then when I put a negative 2 with a negative 12, I get negative 14. 
Now the next step here says now subtract 8x from both sides to isolate the constant on the right. So now that I have my variable term isolated on the left, I move to the right hand side and I want to get that negative 14 by itself. I don't want variables on this side so I subtract 8x and subtract 8x on that side. So the next part over here now says simplify again. So when I simplify, I get 7x on this side because that negative 8 cancels 7, uh, ne sorry, cancels 8 of the positives, and I'm left with 7 positive x's. Those two negative 8's, they're gone, so all I have on this side is negative 14. And now when I know 7x is equal negative 14, to figure out what 1x is, I have to, and if you take a look at the process down here, it says now divide both sides by the coefficient of the variable term to completely isolate the variable. So we're going to divide both sides by 7, and the final answer is x equals negative 2. Now, I don't need to see all of these steps this year. Last year, you might have needed to see them all. But this divide by 7, divide by 7, the stuff in the red that I put there and right at the very top in the blue, I don't need to see those every single time. Now we're going to look at some equations that have fractions in them, and we're going to figure out how we can deal with fractions. And I'm going to start off by talking to you about the incredible disappearing fractions. Wouldn't it be nice if you could just make fractions disappear? And actually you can, because you can multiply a number, you can multiply a fraction by a whole number, and your answer is a whole number. And in fact, the way that works is uh, I could take three quarters here and multiply it by four. And if I take 3 quarters and multiply it by 4, these two 4s cancel each other out because 4 divided by 4 is 1. So I actually do that division first. 4 divided by 4 is 1. And I'm left with an answer of 3. Or I could take 3 quarters and I could multiply it by 8 because 4 goes into 8 two times. So I do that division first because Bedmas tells me I can. I can do multiplication and division in any order I want to. So I'm going to do the division first. I'm going to say 8 divided by 4 is 2, and now I do the multiplication, which is 3 times 2 is 6. And so now I no longer have fractions. And in fact, that will work for any multiple of the denominator. So in the case of 3 quarters, I could multiply by 4. I could multiply by 8. I could multiply by 12. I could multiply by 40. I could multiply by 400. As long as it's a multiple of the denominator, when we multiply by it, it will cancel out, and I will be left with a whole number. So now we're going to make fractions disappear in an equation. And we want all the fractions to disappear. So I want a number that is a multiple of both the denominators. So remember, when we multiply everything by the same number as per the golden rule, so what number will get rid of both denominators? And in this case, I need a number that both 3 and 2 go into. And that the lowest number that both 3 go into, the lowest common multiple, will be 6. And so I'm going to multiply everything by 6. Because the distributive law says if I multiply by 6, it goes through the whole side. So now that I've multiplied through by 6, I can do the divisions on these things before I do the multiplications, which means that right here, I can do that division. That's 6 divided by 3, because the 3 is on the bottom. So 6 divided by 3 is actually 2. So I'm going to stroke those out and put a 2. Over here, for this, this next one, there is no denominator. So there's no cancelling to be done. The next one here, there's a denominator of 2. So I can do 6 divided by 2 is 3. And then again, on my last term, there's no cancelling to be done. So now I take a look at it and I see all I really have to do is 2 times 5x, which is 10x. And then 6 times 2, and there's that negative there, uh, is minus 12. For the next term, I have 3 times 1x is just 3x. And lastly, 6 times 3, we get plus 18. And now you can see our fractions have disappeared, and I'm just left with an equation like what we've done before.
And I'm just going to quickly go through it. The first thing I'm going to do is add 12 to both sides, and I'm not going to write that step down, so follow closely with what I'm saying. I'm going to add 12 to both sides, so the 12 disappears on the left-hand side, and I'm just left with 10x. When I add 12 to the other side, I have this 3x, and I have to add 12 to 18, which gives me 30. Now that I have only variable terms on the right hand side, I want to get rid of the variable terms on the left, or sorry, on the left hand side. I want to get rid of the variable terms on the right hand side. So I'm going to subtract 3x from that side and I simply get 30. When I subtract 3x from the other side, I get 7x. And the last thing that I have to do is divide both sides by 7 to get x equals 30 over 7, and you can leave that as an improper fraction. That's fine with me. And that concludes today's video.